This is a message for special manner of the redemptive history on Wednesday. The word of life comes from Psalms 38 verses 1 through 7. Now let me read. O Lord, rebuke me not in your wrath, and chasten me not in your burning anger, for your arrows have sunk deep into me, and your hand has pressed down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my pain. For my iniquities are gone over my head. As a heavy burden, they weigh too much for me. My wounds grow foul and faster because of my folly. I am bent over and greatly bowed down. I go mourning all day long. For my loins are filled with burning, and there is no soundness in my flesh. This is the word of God. Amen. Today, I'd like to share the message entitled, The Victory of the Cross That Overcame the Excruciating Pain. Why must Jesus suffer pain? It was to bear our suffering on our behalf. He suffered our suffering on our behalf. Turn to Isaiah 53 verse 4. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Also, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5 states, But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. That's what it confesses. Psalm 38 expresses the anguish King David endured as a consequence of his transgression with Bathsheba. Historically, David committed a sin, but Jesus Christ stands as one who bore the suffering and pain of David and all humanity. Indeed, Jesus including David's other tree, he took our sins and he was crucified and he suffered the pain on behalf of us. If that is the case, what to what degree did he suffer on the cross? Number one, it was pain that there is no soundness in his flesh. Look at Psalm 38 verse 3. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. Psalm 38 verse 7 also says there is no soundness in my flesh. This foreshadows that in the future, Jesus was all damaged by the scourging, and there is no soundness in his flesh. Jesus was scourged with a whip. In Matthew twenty-seven twenty-six, it says, After having Jesus scourged, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. And here the word in this passage, scourged, is in the participle form in Greek, indicating Jesus endured continuous whipping. They kept whipped, whipping Jesus. The whip, Roman whip, consisted of three strands, each of which was further divided into three smaller strips. At the end of each strip, there were metal hooks. Two-thirds of the lashes were delivered to the back and one-third to the front of his body. And they took out the fleshes of his body as a result of 
hundreds and thousands of whipping, there was no part of his body that remained unscratched and undamaged. Indeed, in our place, he was all blooded all over his body because he was scorched. There is no soundness in his flesh. Secondly, what type of pain did he bear? Secondly, Jesus' pain was pain to count his bones. According to Psalm 22, 17, it is stated that I can count all my bones. In this passage, the word count is in the peel stem of the verb sapar in Hebrew, which means to count precisely, to calculate because the peer form is emphasizing the meaning. So it means not just count or calculate, but count accurately and precisely. The human body typically consists of 206 major bones. It is said that when a person experiences extreme pain, they become so sensitive and they can count each bone. Small number one, all of Jesus' bones were out of joint. Look at Psalm 22, 14. It is, it is written, all of my bones are out of joint. Here, out of joint translates to the pit file form of the Hebrew word parad, meaning to divide, to be out of joint. This implies that Jesus has been beaten so severely that his bones have dislocated on their own. According to Psalm 38, verse 6, I am bent over and greatly bowed down. I go mourning all day long. Here the word bent means his whole body was totally distorted. Jesus, our Lord was scourged and beaten so much. His whole body was twisted Indeed, all of his bones were distorted, dislocated, and out of joint. Secondly, there was no peace in his bones. Turn to Psalm 38 verse 3. The second half of the verse says, There is no health in my bones because of my sin. This sin is not sin of Jesus, but David's sin and your sin and my sin. Because of our sin, there was no health and peace in Jesus' bones. Here the word health in Hebrew is shalom, which means peace, comfort, security. This indicates that all of Jesus' bones were sore, wounded, cracked, bruised, and out of place, out of joint. Beloved saints, imagine having just one cracked rib. The pain is so excruciating that you can barely move. Now imagine Jesus with every bone in his body broken, twisted, out of joint, wounded, and fractured and bruised. So the agony he endured is beyond our comprehension, is indescribable. Who caused him such suffering? It was for our sins, you and I, that Jesus suffered this unimaginable pain and agony that his bones were all out of joint and there were no health. Number three, it was rotting and foul smelling pain according to psalm 38 verse 5 my wounds grow foul and faster because my folly when your wound is infected and grow foul it smells bad Symbol number one the wounds indicate the wounds due to whipping in hebrew the word wound is habra habra means a scratch and wound and stri strip from scourging. And secondly, the phrase grow foul means that he is near death. The phrase grow foul is makak. Makak in Hebrew means 
to perish, to decay. Therefore, it indicates that Jesus is suffering, that he was scourged, reached to the point of death. Thirdly, the stench is so strong that it repels people. It is so bad the people turn their heads away. He was overly whipped. And his shape, Jesus' shape, was not like that just a human being. It was so cruel. It was unbearable. Here the word faster is ba'ash in Hebrew, which means to disgust. When the stench is so overpowering that it repels people and makes them turn their heads away in disgust. People turn their heads. Look at Isaiah 53 verse 3. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. And he was despised, and we did not esteem him. That's what it records in Isaiah 53 verse 3. According to Psalm 22 verse 6, But I am a worm, not a man. The appearance of Jesus looked like a worm. He didn't look like a, just a human being. It was such a despised and cruel shape. He was in really bad shape. Beloved saints, you and I, Whenever we have a prayer meeting, how often do we face ridicule, mockery, and contempt from enemies? Yet, no matter how much we are ridiculed and mocked, it can never compare to the suffering of Jesus, who was so despised that people turned their heads away from him because it was so disgusting. Jesus loved us so much. And God gave us this great grace because He loved us so much that we can understand even the little, little bit of the heart of Jesus that He was despised and being a warm and despised and disgusted by the people. Then this is a prayer topic for Thanksgiving. Dear beloved saints, no matter what ridicule and mockery you face today, I hope and pray that you will remember the ridicule and mockery that Jesus endured in faith, overcome and triumphant, and pray for them. Instead, I pray that you will become a warriors of faith who pray for those who persecute you, disciple you in the name of the Lord. In conclusion, Jesus' suffering signifies the eternal victory. Colossians 2.15 states that when he had disarmed the rulers and authority, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. On the cross, Jesus was not defeated, but he gained a victory. And that victory is eternal victory. Number one, the cross is the power. According to 1 Corinthians 1, 18, For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Even Jesus was nailed and crucified on the cross, but by the power of the cross, he was victorious. He overcame it. Therefore, secondly, the cross becomes the power that overcomes my pain. When we believe in Jesus, can't we become one with Jesus? Jesus and we become one because Jesus' death becomes my death and his resurrection, my resurrection. So look at Romans chapter 6, verse 8. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. 
So we will not end our life with the death of cross, but when Jesus was risen, then we will be risen too. How did it come to life again? Jesus was alive and he has risen due to the power of God who gave life to him. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 4 it says, For indeed he was crucified because of his weaknesses, yet he lives because of the power of God. Jesus lived because of the power of God. For we also are weak in Him, yet we will live with Him because of the power of God directed toward you. Amen. The power of God who gave new life to, the, to Jesus who died in the cross. But God is promising that in Jesus we will live again. So only if we are in Christ no matter how we suffer and we face difficulties, but we'll not be perished, but we'll come back to life and we will gain the victory for sure. So in 2 Corinthians 13, 4 says, For indeed he was crucified because of weakness, yet he lives because of the power of God. We are weak. However, we will live with him because of the power of God. It is guaranteed beloved saints during this Passion Week. I hope and pray that we will be crucified with Jesus on the cross, but it will not be ended there. But may we can live with Him again. May Jesus' resurrection become my resurrection so that all these concerns and problems, issues, dizzinesses and sicknesses in our family and business workplaces, but let them be crucified and let them be buried with the tomb of Jesus. When Jesus was resurrected, we believe that, and I bless you in the name of the Lord. May all the problems of a family, business, workplace, and church be resolved and restored by the power of God and come to life. This I bless you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful we give praise to you. Jesus suffered extreme, excruciating pain. All his bones were dislocated and out of joint. He had no peace in his bones. His wounds were all grew foul and rotten. And people turned their heads when they saw the face of Jesus. But by the power of God, Jesus was resurrected. Heavenly Father, we pray that may this power of God who brought Jesus to life work mightily within us, even though we are weak. May all those complicated and sophisticated problems in our family, business, and workplace, and church be resolved and restored and come to life. Is there anyone who's suffering from sickness? We want to lay our right hand by faith and offer this prayer. Father, please lay your blood in the hand of the cross so that we can be liberated from concerns and diseases and sicknesses. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, may all those diseases be driven away. May their bodies will be completely healed. We trust and believe that it will be done according to our prayer. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray earnestly. Amen. And now, may the abundant grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and in infinite abounding love our Father God and the inspiration, fullness, comforting, indwelling and communion of the Holy Spirit be upon all the saints. No matter what type of ridicule and mockery they receive, but they want to overcome by faith as they commemorate the pain of Jesus upon their heads at family, workplaces, upon the church, may be with them from now and forever and evermore. Amen.
Thank you so much.